Hello everybody, this is Roman in Ukraine. I recently had a really interesting offer from a, a friend of mine, Stefan Kinsella. He suggested that he host a debate about Ukraine and Russia with me and one of these libertarians who has been repeating what the Kremlin propaganda as far as I'm concerned. I was so excited to get this offer that I immediately said I will offer one Bitcoin as a donation to some libertarian charity of Stefan Kinsella's choosing uh, in exchange for the trouble of having this debate because I think these guys are lying and I want to expose them. This all happened on a Facebook thread about, uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, as many of you know, I've done a lot of work to correct the disinformation about Ukraine. I've put most of it in three essays that I put a lot of uh, effort into and cite a lot of evidence. I, I published these essays on a kind of a little known uh, libertarian website called dailyanarchist.com and I'll uh, link to them in the description below if you want to know what's really going on in Ukraine and how the much of the libertarian media is treating it, uh, please check it out. Uh, why do I think libertarians are getting Ukraine wrong? There's three reasons. First of it, first of all, a lot of libertarians are just caught in this echo chamber of a relatively small number of news sources and and they're all most of them are repeating the same thing over and over and they're repeating same stuff about this narrative of, of Ukraine narrative that that's very intuitively appealing for example they're saying that the US orchestrated a coup in Ukraine uh, for those of us who spent the last 10 years criticizing the war in Iraq criticizing US intervention overseas this is this is very intuitively appealing uh, I might believe it myself were I not living in Ukraine and had I not seen up close what happened on Maidan. It was in fact a revolution. I had friends there. The, my, my lead developer, my lead uh, computer programmer, every time some violence flared up he would drop his work and drive there to be a part of it because he, he thought it was, he, he felt it was his duty to be on Maidan as did up to a million other Ukrainians. This was a revolution, it was not a coup. That's the first reason. Echo chamber filled with intuitively appealing arguments. Russian propaganda is really good at appealing to people's intuition. Um, number two, justification. All right, I'll, most people are incapable of being honest when they feel like they have some skin in the game. I'm not immune from that either but I offer tons of evidence in these articles that I wrote. I'm pretty sure I have it right. Uh, so there's a lot of libertarians who are bitterly opposed to intervention and they are very willing to lie. Lie, or they're very willing to believe things that support their argument, that support their point of view. This is a bias that almost everyone has. They will do justification, they will not do logic. So my thing has been and continues to be, yeah, argue for, for non-intervention if that's what you believe is best, but just do it honestly. Don't tell lies as you are arguing for justification, as you are arguing against intervention. I have a, I wrote an article, I published it in the Daily Beast called uh, Ukraine Caught Between Empires, uh, where, where I actually argue against US intervention in Ukraine. So don't believe all these people who are going to go around calling me a neocon. Look it up. Skasky, Ukraine caught between empires on the Daily Beast. Uh, so the third reason the libertarians are getting this wrong, the third and most serious reason, is that alternative media, whether radical libertarian, radical communist, radical anything, is filled with people who faithfully repeat Russian propaganda. And a lot of them are doing it uh, maybe not a lot, but some of the prominent ones are doing it consciously and deliberately. There are propagandists in the libertarian media and in the communist media and in all the others who faithfully repeat 
Kremlin, uh, Kremlin propaganda. I thought everyone was acting in good faith when this conflict in Ukraine started. And I wrote to people who I've respected and followed for years, and I said, look, I think you're getting it wrong about Ukraine. Here's why you're getting it wrong. Here's the evidence. Dear, for example, Paul Craig Roberts, uh, I think you're wrong that the Maidan protests are motivated by $20 a day getting paid by, by German intelligence. He wrote that in one of his essays. The reason I think that is because my head developer who does not get paid, you know, would not drive to Maidan for, for $20 a day. He, in fact, gets $25 an hour, or got it at the time. You know, it, Maidan was filled with Ukraine's upper and middle class. One of the first persons killed was a, a university professor, you know. Um, I, I wrote these people very respectful letters, and, and they either ignored me, or they called me a dupe, or they called me a Nazi. Uh, there was no absolutely no like curiosity like hey how does this thing look for up close there was no enthusiasm oh we have a, a libertarian contact right there in the middle of it all these people wanted nothing to do with me um, yes it's shocking to hear this accusation that there are that there are conscious Kremlin propagandists in the libertarian media let me give you examples of some of the lies being told for example a recent uh, uh, Casey research newsletter said that the U.S. ambassador tweeted a crudely doctored photo trying to convince us that the Russians shot down MH17. MH17 was the Dutch airliner that got shot down, killed almost 300 people, 298 people, civilians. All right. Very specious argument, very appealing to, to libertarians who spent the t last 10 years uh, criticizing U.S. false flag operations, criticizing intervention, uh, maybe criticizing the account of 9-11 attacks. Problem is, it never happened. There was no such tweet. They just, they just made it up. There was no such tweet. They are lying. Okay? And what's even stranger is that if you look up crudely doctored photo and MH17, you'll find the Kremlin's crudely doctored photo. Uh, the Kremlin has had like five different narratives about what happened with MH17, and and once they released uh, a photo showing uh, a satellite image of a not just the Ukrainian plane shooting down the airliner, but even the missile flying. So like everything was there in this photo, which was very widely ridiculed. That is the crudely doctored photo. There was never any kind of tweet from from the ambas uh, from uh, the U.S. ambassador. And well, the, the even bigger lie was the lie by omission. He never mentioned that there have been separate Malaysian, Dutch, and German investigations into MH17, which all found the same thing, that the Russian side did it. The Dutch uh, even think they've identified the, the people who, have, who were on those intercepted calls that have been pretty widely broadcast, intercepted calls of the Russian mercenaries discussing how the plane was just shot down the Dutch think they've identified the individuals who are on those intercepted calls. You can read the reports. That's one lie. The Nazi thing. All right, very persistent claim by both the radical left and the radical right and the radical libertarians that the Ukrainians are all Nazis. You have to take this in context. If you can imagine a map of Russia, start with the nation of Georgia and just follow the border. Black Sea, Ukraine, Belarus, the Baltic states, up to Finland, all right? If you include Kaliningrad, Russia also borders Lithuania, Poland. There is no country on that border which Russia has not accused of Nazism and fascism. It's just what they do, okay? The, the Jewish community in Ukraine has been very outspoken against this accusation. You could look up uh, Google, uh, Ukraine Jewish community open letter, open letter of the Jewish community. You could look for the interview of the head rabbi in Kiev. This accusation that the Ukrainian protests are characterized by Nazism has never been accurate. And it's also what Russia has been doing. It is their propaganda. It has been their propaganda for 70 years. They accuse all their neighbors of that. Another lie from the Ron Paul Institute for Peace. All right, ridiculous statement. When Russia was invading Crimea, Ron Paul Institute for Peace asked a question, 
Russia is already, by treaty, has a right to use the Sevastopol naval base. How can they be attacking a place in, already, in which they're already legally present? So because Russia has the contract to use a naval base, they have an, it's like they, need, they have the right to attack the whole, the whole region. It's like saying the US has a right to attack all of Cuba because by treaty they have a right to use the Guantanamo Bay naval base. These are the lies that are coming from the libertarian press. Okay, uh, same thing, Ron Paul Institute for Peace claiming persistently that Russia is not invading East Ukraine, despite the attackers themselves saying that we're Russian. Russian flags, Russian uniform, tons of equipment that's unique to the Russian army. Uh, T-72 Bravo tanks, uh, the new RPK machine gun with the handle in front, uh, anti-aircraft systems, uh, mobile artillery systems. Where do they think all this crap is coming from? And how can they persist in their lies when the evidence is so obvious? Uh, another persistent claim that Russian speakers are being ethnically cleansed, repeated over and over and over in the libertarian media, in the communist media, in the radical right media. This is not true. Half the Ukrainian army is Russian speaking. Uh, the heads of the Ukraine's two biggest and most significant volunteer battalions are, in fact, Russian speakers from Eastern Ukraine. I can go on and on, check out my three essays, which I'll link to below. I detail a lot of the ridiculous statements being made. Um, it's been observed that the purpose of Russian propaganda is to destroy the very idea of truth, just to exhaust people by offering so many, so many alternative narratives. I think that's what's going on. What we don't have time to do, or what little uh, one effect of Russian propaganda, is that there's little time to talk about what's actually happening in the places that Russia has occupied. The huge transfers of property that have gone from private owners to the local gangsters, uh, the widespread use of torture, and it's not like in the U.S. where people are shocked and embarrassed. They freaking brag about torturing people. All right, uh, huge suppression of ethnic minorities and religious minorities. Uh, evangelical pastors have been tortured to death in Donetsk. Uh, I think it's 21 now. Crimean Tartar activists have been kidnapped and vanished. There's a really dark cloud that descended over these Russian-occupied areas. And, uh, and Russian propaganda is just so offensive and it's being repeated so dutifully by the libertarian press that there's no little time is left to talk about what's actually happening. The lies are enormous and I think that's evidence alone that if you take the time to look at the evidence and recognize these as lies, I think that that alone is very strong evidence that, that pe these people are not telling the truth. Uh, so, but you can also look at how Russian intelligence works and watching these videos really sealed it for me that, yes, th these are propagandists. These are not just guys who are getting it wrong. These are propagandists. And if you have time and if you're curious, check out two videos on YouTube. One is a series of interviews called Active Measures. These are all uh, Russian KGB agents who defected to the West in the 1980s and they talk about how they would do their job. The other video is uh, a single KGB agent, Yuri Bezmedov, and it's the Deception Was My Job interview. Um, watch these videos and you understand how Russian intelligence works because all these KGB agents, they say the same thing. They say, we don't do any of that or almost none of that James Bond espionage stuff. What we do is affect the message. We, build t we figure out who the opinion makers are. We have huge lists of every community down to very small groups of people and we know who the opinion makers are. And we look for v vain people, uh, we look for people who are struggling, we look for people who want status, and we, we just make it very easy for them to, to repeat, repeat our propaganda. Uh, those two videos really sealed it for me. I think there are, I think there are um, propagandists, conscious propagandists in the alternative media. And it's not just, it's not just the libertarian media. It's like the communist media, uh, 
it's the the radical right media it's all all alternative media and that's what Russian intelligence does they build they build ties with uh, dissenting political groups and get them to repeat their message um, so even if you don't care about Ukraine like I'm not asking you to care about Ukraine let's say a lot of a lot of my audience my very modest audience on this YouTube channel they're libertarians right that are not in Ukraine why why should you care because these people make us look stupid all right we need a we need a basic respect for the truth okay if you're gonna lie to even if you're gonna lie to support something something good like lie to support low taxes lie to support support you know private property um, then you, you're no better you're no better than our ideological opponents all right you got to start with telling the truth so you should still care because people in our movement in libertarianism who who lie they make us all look stupid and they make us all lose credibility okay I'm, about, I'm at about 15 minutes uh, offer still stands if somebody wants to to debate me I'll be happy to do it I'll, I'll donate one Bitcoin to some libertarian charity um, the only thing I ask is that it's somebody that that I've heard of somebody who's already been writing about Ukraine I don't just want someone to pop up out of nowhere to waste my time that's one request second request is that it's recorded and that we post it somewhere somewhere public where, where a lot of people can see it and that's that thanks for tuning in have a good one